So the most fun thing for me is being back among a crowd for whom mobile and the concept of mobile first is so native and everyone who's so fluent in mobile. Uh, I spend a lot of my time with Google's top clients, the Fortune 1000, and the conversation is not as deep as the one that you just heard here. Uh, and so it's fun for me to be able to not start and try to talk to you about why someone should pay attention to the concept of mobile first, but rather to spend my time talking about what the heck you do with it once you realize what's going on with the mobile economy. So I'm going to actually skip my slide that says mobile is big, mobile is big. We see it in our YouTube traffic. We see it in our search traffic. We see it on Zagat. We see it everywhere we look. We see the growth in mobile traffic and the growth in, in tablet traffic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two segments of how we talk to our customers about what's going on in mobile to give you a flavor for the kinds of questions they're asking and Google's perspective as we look at the, uh, at the world. So Peter mentioned consumer behavior. Um, quickly, uh, you think about the change from just literally three, four, five years ago in terms of the idea of mobile first and the fact that, frankly, my customers care about mobile. Uh, probably up through the end of 2011, we always got the question of why mobile, but it's very much shifted. And as we enter 2013, the question is very much, what do I do? How do I approach mobile? As a major media company, as a company offering a service, as a company that offers you delivery pizza, whoever you are, you have to figure out the how of mobile. Uh, and, and that means not only figuring out uh, sort of how your value proposition translates, but also thinking a lot about what the consumer is doing. So that's where we start. So I want to share quickly, it's Google, and so we've got access to lots of data. And I want to sh quickly share this data, which is largely about the time of day of search uh, across three platforms, across tablets, desktop, and smartphones. And this is not proportional to number of searches, but it's indexed as a percentage of traffic. And what you see is the availability of these different devices. We're all walking around IP addresses, and we're using them in entirely new ways. And so the first place we went with customers to say, hey, pay attention to mobile. When everybody leaves work at the end of the day, they're using their tablet and they're using their smartphone, right? The green and the red lines when they're out of school and when they're done with work for the day. It's even more pronounced on weekends and the flurry people I'm sure have similar data, right? So the last two years of my life have been talking to clients about pay attention to mobile and here's the data to prove it. But what we're finding is actually something so much more, um, so much less about the hardware itself. So as we are here talking about mobile first, I actually want to challenge the idea that this is all about mobile and smartphone first. And what I want to introduce to you is the idea that a tablet used at home on the couch has more in common with a smartphone used at home on the couch than that same smartphone used at the couch has in common with a smartphone walking around. And I want to introduce the idea of context. So the idea that there is a specific location of use and a specific time of use, whether that's a day of the week or a time of the day, that impacts the behavior, impacts how we're using the connectivity that we didn't have five years ago and the big processors and the great touch screens that we didn't have five years ago. How are we using that depends largely on when we're using it, where we're using it, what we're near, and the capabilities of the device that we have in our hand. Right? So as a result, what you see is people who are searching for entirely different things right, out and about in the community than they are when they're on their commute. And so we're looking for new signals to help marketers think beyond just intent. Search gives you intent. right? But there's this whole debate here about do banners work, uh, uh, do, do different kinds of mobile advertising work, so much of what it works is understanding relevance, understanding what's going to be useful to that consumer in that moment and offering them both the right creative, the right call to action, and the right actions after that click. So I want to give you an example, and I know the Hotel Tonight people are here and they'll appreciate this example. I don't know how many people have tried the Priceline app, but Priceline launched their mobile app years ago with the idea originally of it being an app for CRM. I've booked a hotel, I want to remember the address, I want to remember whether it has a swimming pool, and I want to remember whether it has free Wi-Fi. And they found that almost nobody used it for that. But what they did find is that north of 80% of the usage was within one day of the intended day of stay. People were booking hotel rooms within one day of the day of stay, hence Hotel Tonight. You were seeing roughly two-thirds of the usage within 20 miles of the property that people were reserving for the night, and roughly one-third of the usage within one mile of the property they were going to stay at that night. People are sitting in the parking lot making a reservation at the hotel. Extremely powerful indication of location, time, and place, and proximity, right? All because we have connectivity when we didn't previously. Whether that's because someone missed a plane or had a big business meeting in San Francisco that they had to stay over for another night, they now had the ability to take an action that they didn't previously. And knowing that time and knowing that proximity and knowing that place has a very, very powerful indication on intent. And so we introduced new consumer behaviors, both in 
apps and in companies, as I said with Hotel Tonight, but also in the media that we show them. And I don't know how you could have a conversation about media, whether it's display or search or video, without understanding what the consumer wants. And so I've talked about this one already, which is the notion of, am I at home? What does it mean if I'm at home? What does it mean if I'm something defined as out and about or I'm walking around the physical world around me using this digital experience to navigate the physical world that I move in? And what does it mean that I'm at work? And we think that this goes even further. If I'm out and about, what does it mean if I'm moving faster than three kilometers an hour versus moving slower than three kilometers an hour? In one case, I'm walking around in the exact same place. In another case, I'm in a, in, in a subway or in a bus or in a car, and I may have entirely different needs. And all of these new signals are what we as an industry need to mine to be able to help marketers bring their dollars effectively to this medium. And so this is the conversation we go a lot deeper with our customers. I'll give you an example. Think about a query for jeans on a desktop device. What are you looking for when you're searching for jeans, Levi's or the generic term jeans, on a desktop device? You're looking to think about washes and, and, and colors and sizing. Um, you're looking potentially to buy those jeans right then and there. You're looking at how it pairs with the blue-ish shirt that you're wearing. And you're thinking about, sort of, is that the right pair of jeans for me in a very e-commerce sort of way? But now think about that same query on a smartphone. What are you looking for? You're looking for a place to buy jeans. It's a very location-driven query. It's much less about buying in that moment. It's much less about the e-commerce that we've built all this analytics, all these conversion moments to track, and I'm going to talk about conversions later. But that moment of search on the smartphone is very much about finding something in the community. And so Google's invested in location extensions. You can kind of see it's a little blurry. Find a store near you. We have the ability within the ad itself to tell you how far you are away from the Adidas store, or the Levi store, or wherever it is, the Macy's store, where you can buy that pair of jeans. And so the call to action changes based on the context, partially in this case because of the device. But if we do it well, largely because of where I am and what, I, what we can anticipate your needs are. So what I want to do now is talk about sort of what you do with that. So the first step is understanding consumer behavior. They have different needs based on these places that they are. And we go deeper and we have lots of examples we can share uh, uh, with the audience. But we talk to the companies that spend money with Google about how to think about the mobile consumer, right? Nowhere near as versed as just about everybody in this audience, but they want to learn. But then when they spend their money, they want to track it. They're smart. They want to understand what it does. And again, whether you're talking about display advertising or search advertising, smart marketers want attribution. They want to understand value. So I want to talk to you for a minute about this. So value in the desktop world, right? Again, regardless of the media. You had a number of different actions, but you think about commerce. Largely, search and media on desktop is about driving some sort of action. It doesn't just mean commerce where I buy that pair of jeans. It could be that I book the, the vacation, or it could be that I sign up for a dating service, or I research the vacation, right? All of those kinds of things e-commerce. And we haven't been so good at it, but we know as an industry that behavior on desktop is actually impacting what happens when we need that house is supposed to be a store, when we walk into a store, right? But as an industry, we largely haven't really attempted to, to track that because so much of what we do is about this e-commerce experience, certainly branding, right? But also e-commerce. But then you think about that evolution based on the first part of my conversation. I'm going to build this all the way. You think about that evolution now when you move to the mobile world. And I'll start on the right-hand side. When someone takes action on mobile, certainly they can finish that action by downloading an app or actually ending up in a mobile app to take an action, right? I'll continue with my example uh, of booking a hotel room, is that someone could take a media experience, right, and end up in an app booking a hotel room, booking a trip, booking a cruise, booking something travel related. They certainly can take the, the traditional media to media, an experience on the web or in an app that ends up on a site, and that's easier to track. And then they can take a new type of experience, which is moving across devices, right? Very, very challenging. Whole companies being started just to think about a customer-centric, a user-centric view in a multi-device world, right? How many people have been waiting for a bus, done a search, started to have an experience that they were researching because it was on their to-do list, researching that vacation I've been talking about, got a certain distance through that, but then came back later and finished that on a tablet, or came back later and finished that on a desktop, or maybe they continued it on the tablet, but then ultimately came back and finished it on another device later, right? So the consumer journey that used to be the upper right, some sort of media experience that led me to a purchase, now becomes much more zigzag. But absolutely critical that we as an industry understand the path that the consumer takes as they move toward purchase. All of that on the right in the digital world, now I want to talk about the physical world. You think about how much of the experience, personal experience, show of hands, how many people have done a map search, whether it's ours or someone else in the last 24 hours? Wow. 
I would, I'd like to think that all rooms are similar, but the idea that you have a search experience or a display experience or just a maps experience that ultimately impacts you in a store, right? Whether it actually drives you into a store or whether it helps you find a, a, a movie theater or a restaurant uh, or a hotel that you're looking for, right? And so a very, very big part of the experience is sort of this intersection of the digital and physical world affecting our behavior about where we make a purchase. Very, very powerful experience around making phone calls as well. In many, many verticals, media driving to a click-to-call experience. We see this in financial services. We see it in food delivery. We see it in travel. And we've seen click-to-call work in places that traditionally you didn't make the purchase with a phone call. Right? People are driving media to call centers because it's such a powerful experience on the mobile phone to be able to make a phone call, something that device is very, very good at. It's also a very powerful way of driving a conversion before you've built a pretty good mobile website. But both of those are massive new challenges as an industry to track. And then you get the reverse of the top one, which is this idea of showrooming. And I hope most people are familiar with it. But the idea is that you're in a store thinking about a refrigerator or a flat screen TV. And you now have a digital companion and the ability to get more research, to get pricing information, to get social information about do your friends like that product, and to understand that better and maybe to buy in an online world. Right? And it's very important to the brick and mortar retailers and massively important to the e-commerce world. All of these experiences on the bottom are big attribution challenges with the possible exception uh, of driving traffic into a mobile website. All of these represent entrepreneurial opportunity for Google, for people like Flurry, and for everybody in this room. Until people can track this, the money that flows into mobile will be limited. Once we can track it, the money that flows into mobile will be massive. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. This is Sears' website. And you think about the things I talked about earlier, a little bit of a stretch on the bottom. What does Sears offer you on their site? They're tailoring this experience to the mobile user and what that mobile consumer wants. So certainly they offer commerce. I can search and I can find the washing machine or I can do a barcode scan and I can have an m-commerce experience. Trackable? Maybe. Right front and center, big button, download our app. Very powerful. You heard the conversation here about driving discovery. People who are already on the Sears site, it's a very, very valuable experience for them to develop that persistent relationship with you by having their app on your phone so they can combat Amazon selling you that same washer and dryer. So now they've got the idea that, okay, we, we know we want them to maybe have this M-commerce experience and we want them to download our app. But right in the middle of the page, they put the most valuable real estate, find our store, right? Because you're now on the Sears site searching on that Westinghouse refrigerator and they want you to find your way into a Sears store. They don't want you to think twice and end up on an e-commerce site. And then, as I said, a little bit of a stretch, but from behind the contact button, you can make a phone call. But now think about what this is as an attribution challenge for Sears. They're creating massive value for the customer with all of these. It's the right site, and we use it as an example of a great mobile site. However, they can't track two-thirds of this. So quick ROI calculation. This is the way our customers think, and this is relevant for you regardless of what you do. This is about how the dollars flow into mobile, which funds what all of us do. Think about the flow of the traditional ROI. I spent $600,000 in Q3. I got 10,000 orders. That results in an ROI that is not going to have me spending again. My e-commerce experience is not delivering the ROI. There are better ways to spend my money than on mobile. It's a challenge we as an industry face. I get that question all the time. Mobile converts. But now let's talk about the world that I talked about at the beginning about consumer behavior, and let's talk about Sears. And no, most marketers don't offer all of this experience, but very briefly, from Sears' site, you could make a phone call or you could think about Domino's Pizza or Geico where they're driving calls. Think about how do you create the value of a phone call? Right? We now have people who used to use their call center for CRM who need to think deeply about what is the value of that phone call because it affects what they think about when they bid for media and when they spend money. Right? And maybe they don't have the, the attribution set up from the call center to fire some sort of pixel that says, yes, somebody you know, signed up for Comcast or somebody ordered a pizza after making a phone call after seeing an ad. The second column, think about mobile to store. Right? Think about the idea that we're driving someone into a store because they had a media experience. Extremely powerful. Right? One of the most important investment areas for Google to understand. Right? What is that worth on a per click? And I'm going to give you an example. I already gave the example of e-commerce. And what is it worth when you download the Sears app? That's worth something to Sears. But how much? And how do they think about that? How do you develop that lifetime value? I had some great lifetime value conversations before my presentation. How do you think about lifetime value of someone who's installed your app? And ascribe that value so you can be a smart media buyer. Driving installs is not enough. OK, I want to give you one example. This is Adidas and iProspect, who is their search, their DR, their direct response agency, who helps them understand ROI. OK, so Adidas' site first. You can see it's very commerce oriented, right? So they have that traditional commerce model from their site. And this has nothing to do with media yet. 
but clearly very good real estate. They're putting find a store in the store locator. If you were to click on that, it would spawn a map, and you would see an Adidas owned and operated store map mashup. So on top of, I hope, a Google map, you would see a mashup of Adidas stores and places that you could go buy your Adidas Originals kicks or that tracksuit you've always wanted or whatever it is, right? So the question is, if all they track through this site is e-commerce, but they know that some of the value they've created and offered to that consumer is from a store locator, right? Do they really understand their user and do they understand the opportunity to drive the behavior they want in mobile? And so what Adidas did working with them is they had some numbers they knew and they did some experiments. So I'm gonna work from the bottom up. So they knew for people who organically ordered in their stores that their average basket size was $80 for the people who made a purchase. So they thought, they thought it was a conservative assumption if someone had arrived in that store after doing a search or clicking on an ad that they would spend only the average as opposed to somebody who clearly is very focused on a purchase. So they used the baseline conservative average at $80. Then they took what percentage of the people who made it into a store actually made a purchase. Again, they used their existing data, data that they already had from people who showed up in their stores, one in five roughly makes a purchase. So those two numbers they already knew. And then they ran A-B experiments, and I can explain that to people who don't know A-B experiments, but they basically wanted to understand of the people who clicked on this link to store locator, how many of them made it into a store. And they ran media in some cities and not in others, and they ran control groups, and they ran on some days and off some days, and all they wanted to do, not to six decimal places, they wanted to understand the impact of the media, the impact of that store locator click here on driving people into store. And once they had these three numbers, they were able to ascribe a value to the store locator. May seem like a little thing. They are literally the most advanced advertiser I have this, and there are no decimal places on this slide. Absolutely critical, because what happens now is Adidas can be extremely advanced with driving traffic into their store and have an advantage over everybody else in the apparel industry, over everybody else in the shoe industry, right? They understand how mobile works. They understand the consumer behavior at its fundamental level. They're able to attribute it and understand how they're driving value at their core marketing goals, driving people into stores, purchases of shoes in stores, right? So most of you may not be selling media to Adidas. This matters to you. This matters to you if you have dictionary.com. This matters to everybody in the industry because this is how the dollars scale in this industry, is as customers come to understand the value that we, through all our entrepreneurial efforts, are creating, then they can invest in this medium. And until they understand this value, their investment will be more limited. Summary slide. The world changed. We're all chasing the consumer, right? All of you as consumers are more advanced than my customers as marketers. Our job as an industry is to help marketers get more sophisticated. As we see this sociological shift in consumer behavior based on connectivity that I would put to you is less about the hardware of the device and more about where you are and the actions that you want to take in that moment. We are taking new actions, Marketers are getting educated on how to understand those actions. We're building tools, you're building tools to help them understand those actions. And I believe more than ever that the media that helps people engage with a consumer who is out and about in the community, which is the newest part of this, right? The reason we talk about mobile is both because the device is called a mobile, but also because it is quite literally mobile. It's out and about in the community. That is a place where we've reached people with outdoor advertising and a number of different things. But that is the place where the innovation is happening. That is a place where my customers need to get educated and need to learn more. And that is a place where when we solve it, this question about mobile marketing and does it work will be proven and I think will actually capture the value that we're already creating in the consumer behavior. Thank you very much.